Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and it's been a while since I posted a video. I'm excited to show this game to you. And before I forget, I also want to tell you that the 2023 World Tournament for War of the Ring is going to be starting soon. Registrations will be open at the time I post this video, so check a link in the in the video description to be able to register it's completely free it's the biggest tournament of the year the best players are involved and it's it's also totally open to new players last year we had more new players than experienced players so everybody is welcome we're trying a new format this year that should be I think pretty beginner friendly so if you have been thinking about oh maybe I should get into it now is the time sign up and have some fun all right, with that, let's jump into this game. This is a game that I played a month ago against um, Ivashenko, and I am playing Shadow. They are playing Free People. Free People got two action tokens, and you can see I allocated one eye and uh, rolled no more eyes, four Palantirs, and two Musters. So my opening hand has Stormcrow and Wormtongue. Normally, I would tend to not play either of these cards for the card effect, but with four Palantirs, maybe I will. So we'll see. Free people got a pretty flexible roll, and unfortunately, no playable character cards with um, Gandalf, which is always a little sad, but... Um, Maybe they'll get caught in the hunt, and then they can use the Palantir to hide. I don't know. Let's see what happens. So, um, oh, my opponent accidentally, my opponent was learning the Java client, and they accidentally showed the red arrow. So I showed Stormcrow just to, you know, be fair. Why not? Um, okay, so I, they pass. I start by drawing a card because obviously I'm going to need to draw cards with four Palantirs, so I might as well just start drawing. I'm drawing strategy cards to you know, just see what I get. Happy to see Shadow Lengthens. That's a great, you know, useful army movement. Normally I would want to save it for reinforcements, but on a turn like this where I just have so many Palantirs, that's a perfectly playable uh, strategy card. So I'm happy to see that. Okay, uh, my opponent passes some more, which is reasonable. I draw Threats and Promises. I wouldn't normally play this either. Um, they, well, let's see, they draw a card. That makes sense if you don't have anything to to um, play. I might be tempted to move. You know, it's not likely that I'm going to catch them, but if you move twice, I have some chances of catching them and revealing them, and then that Palantir can be a hide from Strider. So I would be tempted to lose Gandalf turn one, given that Shadow is likely to get Isengard, I mean, to get Saruman. So... Um, okay, but whatever, they draw a card. And now I think I draw another card here. And um, I think if I'm going to play Threats and Promises, now is a nice time to do it because they um, have an army muster showing. I don't know. I guess we'll see what happens. So um, I go ahead and muster Isengard here. Uh, no. Um, oh, I'm just demonstrating the idea of what uh, we were going over etiquette in terms of undos. Okay, so I'm just showing them that it's fine to undo as long as nothing has happened. And, um, okay, I draw another strategy card because I know I'm going to play one with this Palantir and I want to see if I get something better. Um, so, okay, that makes sense. They go ahead and move now and I miss. That's fair. And I get Isengard to war. And then they use the army muster to get their armies in position. I like Adarest to Westmanet for sure. Iron Hills to Erebor also makes sense. Um, they do have scouts, and so I wonder if it makes sense to get this unit from Carrick to Old Forest Road. Um, maybe they want to play Grimbjorn as a card effect and then move to Old Forest Road, so um, that could be good too. All right, I get Saruman, obviously. That's like the one good thing in my turn, and... Um, they move a second time, and now I hit them, which, you know, two moves, one on a six, one on a five. It's not crazy that I hit them. I don't know exactly what the odds are. I guess we do know. It's um, five-sixths to miss, and then two-thirds to miss. So ten-eighteenths uh, to miss. So more likely than not to miss, but pretty close to 50-50 that I'll catch them. 
And if it's 50-50 that I catch them, it's probably about 50-50 to get revealed. So we're talking about 25% of the time with two moves on a single eye, you will get revealed if you're going to move twice. And so that was a really long-winded way of saying maybe it did make sense to save that Palantir to see if you get caught. Okay, but a three is rolled, worked out perfectly. Bye-bye, Gandalf. Okay, um, so that worked out very well for Shadow, I mean, for free people. And now, um, obviously, it's better not to get caught at all. But still, losing Gandalf to a three when Saruman is in play can be really nice to get Gandalf turn two. So looking good for Fellowship. Um and then I go ahead and play Shadow Lengthens because it's the most playable card, I think, in my hand. Maybe I play Threats and Promises. Maybe I play Worm Tongue. But Shadow Lengthens get my, gets my armies going. Um, so why not? Okay, so I go ahead and get ready to attack Gondor. Feels like it could be a good approach given that um, I could take out... I could have potentially a good attack against Rohan with fighting uruk and Wormtongue, and possibly Threats and Promises to keep Gondor getting uh, one away from war. So maybe it makes sense, if my plan is to play Threats and Promises, maybe it makes sense to do that first and then play Shadow Lincolns later, but I, I'm still tempted maybe I'll go up north. So, okay, I think this, this probably makes sense. Let me know if you would have played different cards or done different things with Four Palantirs turn one. Okay, so we go on to round two. They get Fearfire Foes. Ooh, that's nice. Turn one, or turn two. And um, and that is the benefit of drawing cards, as they did. So so I think there's definitely some, certainly some validity to that. I get Day Without Dawn and Grand. I'm happy to see Grand and Farting Urukai as productive attacks that I can make with Palantirs. Um, Day Without Dawn, okay, could be useful if... Um, they try and get they try and crown Aragorn, so um, or if they get some crazy roll. All right, I get um, two more Palantirs here, but plenty of musters, so that's great. And they get Gandalf turn two, so that's really nice for them. Um, Gandalf shows up in Fangorn. One thing I might have considered is maybe Gandalf shows up in Grey Havens, and that way you can play Fear Fire Foes and get the North straight to war. Um, you know, I don't want to accelerate the Witch King, but that's a pretty efficient play, um, so I would certainly, I would certainly consider that here. Then again, you do have two end cards in hand, which is which is really nice, um, and is significant against Rohan against Isengard. Um, so, yeah, it's 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 a tough call. I can understand why they might want might not want to accelerate Grant, uh, the Witch King. All right. Um, I get Sauron to war. Oh, interesting. Okay, so they're separating a hobbit here. That's cool. So they separated a hobbit to be able to play Fear Fire Foes. I forgot about this. It's been a while since we played this game. And instead of bringing Gandalf... If you're willing to separate a hobbit, I might have been tempted to just move twice, get past um, Lori, get past Moria, and then next turn after that get a a, a companion into Fangorn. Um, but maybe there's no rush. Maybe it's nice just to move once, and then um, yeah, okay. This is an interesting play. Cool. All that said, I still might have waited. There's no, I don't think there's a huge rush in doing that right now. Um, so I might be tempted to just pass a bit as um, free people. Okay, so uh, as Shadow, I get my Gondor armies set up, and then I'm really set up for Gondor. Oh, right. And here is a moment that if my plan was to play, what what am I playing with my two Palantirs? I, sh I sh should talk about Shadow. What am I playing with my two Palantirs? I think I'm playing Worm Tongue, maybe, and uh, Threats and Promises, I guess. And if I'm going to play Threats and Promises this turn, which it seems like I am, like, why not play it? Why not play it now um, before I make a clear attack, clear movement towards towards Gondor. Um, so I do think that's probably a mistake seeing what I'm seeing what I have. Maybe I'm playing Day Without No, I can't play Day Without Dawn because um Southrons and Easterlings aren't to war. So what am I playing? 
Yeah, Warm Tongue, Threats and Promises. That's what I'm playing. Unless I'm drawing strategy cards and just discarding those, I think that feels, which I think feels pretty bad. Um, all right, so then my opponent uses the muster action token to muster Gondor towards war, which I think is a great play because I could be coming in. I mean, I'm probably not coming in to um, Gondor this turn, but it is possible um, Black Captain commands, or, or um, sorry, I mean... Um, Ring rates are abroad. Maybe maybe it's really hard. How can I actually attack Minas Tirith this turn? Um, okay, so maybe maybe it doesn't need to happen right now. But still, um, I think it I think it makes sense to advance Gondor with that. And then if I do attack Asgiliath, you can use this muster um, army muster this round uh, to start getting units. So I think I think that's a cool use of it. Um, though maybe it could have. Could have waited one more action, I guess. But look what happens. Now uh, I play Worm Tongue. And if I had played Threats and Promises, they couldn't have done that. So Threats and Promises does prevent the, the action token. All right, so I play Worm Tongue, and then they go ahead and move the Fellowship. I hit them, and I miss. And then they just take three Corruption, which I think makes sense. No, no reason to lose Strider right here. I mean, you could, but I don't think it's worth the risk. Um, and then I draw a card because I guess I'm just going to throw away threats and promises and storm crow. I mean, I like, I like storm crow for a great host, but I sort of set myself up for a situation that it doesn't make sense to, um, to play this now because the most effective use would be, I think against Gondor and I, and I missed that opportunity. So Yeah, I guess it makes sense to draw the strategy card. Curious to know how you would have done that with Palantirs. I think it makes sense to play Worm Tongue. Um, maybe if I'm going to be throwing away Threats and Promises anyway, maybe I draw the strategy card first, see if it's playable, and then um, play Worm Tongue. I guess I end up with one fewer card in my hand. But I'm going to end up discarding. I'm going to discard two cards next turn anyway. So I don't I don't think that matters too much. Okay, um, and now they play Fear of Fire Foes, which I certainly expected given the separation of a Hobbit um, to Bree, um, and I saved my um, my army my muster for the last action um, so that I could get the Witch King, and I think this is a subtle. Um, uh, benefit of the action tokens, which is that if you use your action token when you have the same number of dice as shadow, then you end up as free people end up taking the last action of the round. And so this is a situation where since they did end up using the action token, had they waited, I think one more action um, and passed a little bit more, then um, then I would be able to as free people play Fear Fire Foes as the last action, and then this muster doesn't let Shadow get the Witch King on turn two. So one die difference, not a huge deal, but um, there we go. All right, so I definitely bring in the Witch King, and even though I've had a lot of Palantirs and very slow army movement, at least I have nine dice turn three, which I think is good. So I haven't been short on um, musters, and even with relatively few um, eyes, I've hit the Fellowship twice. So I've, I've definitely been getting lucky on the hunt. Um, Though they haven't been revealed, and who knows if it actually helped them or not to get Gandalf. Probably was a net benefit to the Fellowship to get hit and lose Gandalf. So um, maybe that's not actually lucky for me, but lucky for them. Okay, um, so we go on to next round, and I have all these cards. What am I discarding? I think I'm probably getting rid of Worn with Sorrow and Toil and Threats and Promises because I like the combat effect of Great Host. I'm definitely keeping... I don't know, maybe I discard Day Without Dawn because I never really want to play it. I just want to keep it as a threat. Um, I don't know. Curious to know what you would discard a Shadow here given given the state of the game, given the progress of the Fellowship. Um, knowing me now, I think I get rid of Threats and Promises. And I think I get rid of Worn with Sorrow and Toil. And I'm happy to hold Day Without Dawn as a safety net in case they draw um 
in case they roll a bunch of wills. Let's see what I actually get rid of. Um, threats and promises, worn with sorrow and toil. Okay. So my current uh, self agrees with my past self. Um, okay. And they drew um, power too great. And they also have the red arrow, um, which is not quite as efficient because they already moved out of Edoras. Um Worm tongue, right? So it doesn't activate them. They could get some more units in Edoras, which isn't, which can still help. Um, it also will trigger Worm tongue going away because then there won't, there will be units in Edoras which will count as an attack. If you simply, if as Shadow you simply move units into Edoras when it's empty, then that does not count as an attack against Edoras, and therefore Worm tongue will stay in play in that situation. So um, as free people, you're thinking, well, it's kind of hard to um, get Rohan to war, but at least maybe I can get some units in there. So, all right, we'll see what happens. I allocate one eye. I roll no more. So I've definitely been low on eyes. Three more Palantirs. So just um, out of curiosity, where am I on statistics? I have, um, I'm plus six <laughs> on Palantirs right now. I've rolled nine Palantirs on 21 dice. So that's a lot of Palantir so far. Um, all right, uh, let's see how this round continues. So two musters, I'm okay with two musters. I can get the South Rounds and Easterlings to war, which will turn on Day Without Dawn. Um, I also have Fighting Urukai and Grand. So um, the one benefit, and I have Hill Trolls. So I have playable cards here. I think um, Having a lot of Palantirs in some ways can be bad, but if you have a full hand and you sort of craft your hand to maintain playable cards, you can mitigate the um, sort of negative effects of rolling more Palantirs. Because, you yeah, you know, I did waste a few actions early on drawing cards, but now at least I have pretty playable cards. All right, so um, three people roll two movement. Um, perfectly fine and a good amount of musters. So um, Gondor, if I attack it, uh, is certainly not going to be a particularly easy target to crack. Um, I'm going to have to time my attacks pretty carefully. So I start by getting the South Rounds and Easterlings to war. They're passing, which I think makes sense. Um, and then I play Hill Trolls, buffing up the Witch King. It's, I think, you know, it's not ideal. Usually you want to play it after you've attacked and you see how the attack goes, but it seems like I'm going to need um, reinforcements for Gondor. I don't know exactly where else I'm going to attack yet. So, um, I think that's reasonable. Curious to know, um, what else you might've done. I think my plan is to attack in and then play Grand. So I have a useful playable card and you know what? Dol Amroth's going to muster up and that's just the way it goes. I think is my plan. We'll see what happens. Um, Fellowship starts moving. I miss. And then I go ahead and play Day Without Dawn here. That's interesting. I guess I'm thinking, what other care, what other thing am I going to do with a um, Palantir? I kind of want to play Grand, but then I have another Palantir. I guess maybe it's a redraw. I could just draw an extra card and then play Grand. All right. But I play it here. Um, maybe it's a waste. Um... It certainly gives them freedom to know in the future that it's that they're safe on the wills. Um, I think I just didn't want to slow down the fellowship because moving once against um, only a single eye hitting on a five, it's it's nice odd. So I don't know. Curious to know what you'd have done there. All right. So um, now they play Grimbjorn. That's fine. Um, yeah, I guess they just they want to power up the north. Um, and they don't want to waste these cards. Part of me feels like you already have the north at war. So why not just, like, you could muster a bunch in Dale. Um, Dale is closer to the Woodland Realm and Erebor. I mean, maybe they're going to end up going towards military stuff. And so... That's a more efficient muster. But I like holding on to the scouts, particularly because I don't have other scouts in my hand. So I would be more tempted, if I if I want to muster the north, I would prefer an elite in Dale than an elite and leader in Carrick if I get to keep scouts in my hand. Get, uh, I guess you have red arrow scouts. I don't know why I said they didn't have other scouts. They do have red arrow scouts. So, okay. Yeah, makes could be reasonable. Um, 
All right. Certainly not a crazy idea to muster in Carrick. Uh, all right. I go ahead and attack now, and I guess I'm thinking I can't wait any longer to attack. Otherwise, I'm just wasting time with these um, character dice, so I might as well try and attack in. Um, I can get pretty close to Dol Amroth, so I could attack into Asgiliath, and then I can attack Pelargir, and then I can attack Lamadon, which is kind of cool. So, all right. I play Stormcrow here in my attack against Asgiliath because why not try and kill them? And it is cycling? I don't know. What am I cycling for? I guess I'm cycling for Corsairs. I don't know. Um, all right, I get one hit. And um, then I didn't bother re-rolling because I know that's going to um, take out the last unit. By the way, this could have been a nice use of scouts, right? Like you could just have three units in Pilar gear and then use a muster into Minas Tirith. So um, I think that sort of is a immediate cost of that muster in Carrick, the uh, Grimbjorn. Okay, um, Gondor's now at war. They muster into Minas Tirith. I think that makes a lot of sense. All right, now a shadow. Do you go, and by the way, in that attack, they did get two hits, um, so Faramir can fight, and that's Goliath. Um, do you now, with these two attacks, do you go into Minas Tirith such that you can then play Grand, um, or do you um, go after Dol Amroth and get just outside Dol Amroth? Um, I don't know what's right, and um, and by the way, on my redraw, I redrew Rage of the Dunlendings, so... Maybe I play that um, with this Palantir, but um, I like the idea of attacking in to Minas Tirith and then um, having Gron. That's a pretty efficient play. All right, so I attack Minas Tirith. That's the direction I go. And then I they pass, and um, uh, I move into Asgiliath because I'm happy to uh, occupy that key location. And... Um, then they play the red arrow here. That's interesting. Um, I might have been tempted to... I, I understand they don't want to discard cards, um, but I might have been tempted to muster in Gondor because I could be mustering in Dol Amroth. I could be mustering in Pilargir. I don't know exactly how many musters I'm going to roll next turn. Um, you know, this turn you had three, but next turn you might not. And I think any Wills of the West I want to move to... use to progress the fellowship so i would have been tempted to hold on to that a little bit longer though obviously it is nice to have edoras there and it does set you up for a good army movement edoras into westmnet westmnet into helm's deep and then really defend helm's deep well so i see benefits of that too okay um and now i go ahead with my plan of attacking with grand because yeah this is my whole plan obviously this is a pretty buff army in minas tirith they have um, seven hit points and a leader against my 11 hit points. So, you know, not likely that I'll completely win this fight, but um, I do have three free rounds. Um, and I know that in round one, they can't play any nasty combat card. So um, I start by playing Rage of the Dunlendings because, um, I don't know, it seems like an effective strategy card to play. Um, and I do two hits to myself to get maximum benefit. I only have four leadership, so I do want to get a few more um, hits on the combat roll. And um, I only get one hit on the combat roll and then um, no hits on the... And I mess up slightly on the... I thought that the, for some reason I thought that the three was hitting. I don't know why. Um, but then I re-roll it. We fix it. And then I'm like, oh yeah, it was a hit. So I end up getting two hits and um, they get one against me. And I'm like, well, maybe that was a bad plan, actually, looking <laughs> looking at the situation, because I have um, eight hit points to their five, and I'm already down to only a combat, you know, five units in there. So um, I don't know. I obviously wanted more than two hits. I think expectation is um, like three and a half or something like that. Um, so two is a little below average, but, you know, it's not that crazy. And... Um, and then I have another Relentless Assault. I don't think I'm that crazy. I think I'm going to play Swarm of Bats here. Um, yeah, I play Swarm of Bats, and they don't play anything. And I get um, one hit. So, um, and then they get five hits. So, <laughs> that was a lot of hits um, against me. 
And um, the rule is that you have to press. That's the thing about um, Grand. And I did play Swarm of Bats. I feel like it was fairly cautious, but, um, you know, obviously this is a very bad situation. They have four um, four units to my three units, even though I do have more leadership. It's not, it's definitely not what I want to be doing. Um, and they, pl uh, they don't play any card. That's really surprising to me. I would have expected uh, no quarter here. Um, ah, okay. So, um, right. They said that we were, that we were talking on, on voice chat. And I think they said something like no card, but then they meant to play a card. And so we, we let them play a card. So whatever. So they play, it makes sense. I mean, they play a card here. So, um, they play no quarter. Um, they get one hit, which turns into two. So they don't kill the witch king here. I get one hit against them, and we are now in a situation where I have a single regular against um, their three regulars, and we're going to next round. So the Witch King did not die in that suicidal attack against Minas Tirith. How crazy was it? I don't know. Um, I think I looked it up later, and, it, and they got like seven hits against me total, I think, plus the one that I don't count from the combat card. So um, it was either seven or eight. Right, I I started with um, eleven, and I'm now at one, so that's ten hit points. But I did two to myself, so they rolled a total of seven hits plus one from the card. What are the odds that in three rounds of combat they're going to roll seven hits? It's actually not that crazy. I think I remember looking; it was like ten percent, or maybe even twenty percent. It was definitely not like a ridiculously low number. So even though it felt kind of spiky because they got five hits that one round, it wasn't so crazy. So I, I don't think I realized quite how risky I was being with that um, relentless assault. So um, I probably just shouldn't have risked it like that. I think Gron is right. I think playing something round one was probably right, but maybe I didn't need to do two hits. Maybe I could have just done one hit. I don't know. Um, okay. Anyway, they redrew. We're, we're in now the next round. Um, they rolled before me. Um, and I guess we, I think we're going to re-roll that. I think that doesn't count because I didn't allocate eyes. I shouldn't know what they roll before I allocate eyes. We're just like that. That's not right. So, um, I allocate one eye. I roll two more and then, um, Okay, I guess we let it stand. All right, fair enough. I guess we were talking on Discord, so some of this is missed in, um, maybe I said that I was allocating one eye and, they were, and then they rolled, so who knows. Um, also, it's not a huge surprise that I was allocating one eye, so we let it stand. Okay, um, but typically, um, you know, you should have Shadow allocate the eye and roll, and or whatever they want to allocate, and then roll, and then um, only afterwards should you um, have free people roll. Okay, so um, just note, three more Palantirs. So that's pretty exciting. Um, and they start off um, moving armies. And um, we talked about this afterwards, and they I think they just forgot about um, sorties. Um, so, you know, sometimes people make mistakes or forget things. I think, I think this is definitely a clear case um, like you might as well take the shot at killing the Witch King. You, that's, you know, yeah, you'll get besieged again and you might lose a unit. Um, but killing the Witch King and two Nazgul on turn four, um, is almost certainly worth a die. So, um, you know that, yeah, just sometimes that happens as a mistake. Okay. Um, I am very happy that the Witch King did not die. <laughs> uh, we can imagine some alternate world in which the the combat didn't go that badly, and so I'm merely like reinforcing with uh, you know a smaller number of units. So whatever. But clearly, I'm now going to reinforce Minas Tirith, and um, and then I start to bring in uh, the <laughs> Southrons and Easterling units because clearly I'm going to need them. Um, 
And my opponent used the army movement to get their uh, units in position, Edoras to Westamnet and Carrick to Old Forest Road, which I think makes sense. They did end up playing Grimbjorn and then moving, so um, I think that's really nice. Um, another idea just to consider, you know, you could have mustered and dale, mustered and dale, and then the movement could have been into Woodland Realm. Um, or you could just, you know, just muster more. Um, part of the reason I think to get units into Old Forest Road is so that they can retreat into Woodland Realm if Old Forest Road gets attacked. But because um, Dale, because the North is already at war, you can just do a normal army movement whenever you muster up Dale enough. You can just do a normal move, army movement into Woodland Realm. You don't have to rely on this retreat to get in. I mean, it's still nice to have units in Old Forest Road because it's going to slow down any attack from Dol Guldur. Um, so anyway, this is fine. I think my opponent did a really nice job defending Dew here, um, Dale, Erebor, Woodland Realm, um, both by some army movements, filling up Erebor, and then um, the Fear of Fire foes, obviously, is, is great. And they have not drawn the Elven reinforcement for Woodland Realm, and they have not mustered the Elves at all, and yet they've really done a nice job defending Woodland Realm. So uh, as Shadow, I'm certainly thinking I'm going to take out, um, I'm going to go for Gondor, um, even though it might be a bit of a slog, I am going to probably try and go for Gondor and then um, at some point probably end up going for um, Rohan and then one more stronghold. Maybe, maybe I'll manage to pick off Rivendell or even Lorien if I draw into Balrog. That's sort of what I'm thinking right now. Um, okay, I drew Pits of Mordor. Uh, useful card for purposes of mustering, uh, which I might be in need of, but my top priority was to reinforce Minas Tirith, so that's what I did. Okay. Um, yeah, and now they got one muster. So, right, this is an example of, they, they did get this Will of the West, and they could use it to muster, but they might prefer to, um, you know, use it to make progress with the Fellowship. So, um you know, if I had a little bit different movement and Corsairs, which is not crazy because I've drawn uh, 10 uh, strategy cards by this point, um, I could get Dol Amroth when it's not when it's not even five units yet, even though Gondor has been at war for a turn and a half. OK, um, I go ahead and draw. I draw Return to Valinor. Almost never will play a uh, that as a card. I don't think I've ever played it as a card effect. Um, and by the way, if you have a game where you played Return to Valinor as a card effect and it was a really good use of it, uh, I'd love to see that game log. Um, but I'm very happy to have Deadly Strife. You know, that's a that's a very powerful combat effect. Um, so I'm happy to see it. Also, um, I always take note anytime I get an army card because you can use that to get rid of Power to Great. Now, Power to Great has already been played as the combat effect, so I'm not worried about that specifically for this game. Okay. Anyway, um, I attack into Minas Tirith. I play return to Valinor, um, and I get enough hits to take out Minas Tirith. So bye-bye Minas Tirith. That could have gone much, much worse. And I redraw Horde from the East. Maybe that should tempt me into going up for Erebor. Um, but still I'm, I'm nervous. I'm really nervous about that. I'm probably just going to use it as a combat effect. Um, okay. They play Horn of Gondor here. Um, I'm pretty surprised by that. Um, and oh, I should have acknowledged that they declared the fellowship past Moria into Dimeraldale. And while that does open them up to the various, uh, card effects that, um, can hit the fellowship, like, you know, tile drawing cards, I, I do think there's some merit to that because, um, they're more likely to get revealed. The hunt pool, they've drawn two um, of the threes, which means the hunt pool is even more heavily, it already already starts a little bit heavily stacked towards reveal than not reveal, but now it's even it's getting more and more heavily stacked towards revealing. So I think that, that was actually a really good case of, um, like a good reason to consider it. Also, I haven't been drawing character cards. I've only drawn, I only have four character cards total. So, um, you know, maybe that will change my strategy in some way, but I've mostly been drawing strategy cards. So um, for all those reasons, I think that was a cool play. This play is interesting to me. I feel like the Fellowship is doing okay. I would be tempted to just move, but um, 
maybe it's worth it to play it. So they play it. Um, I am happy as Shadow. I'm happy to see them going a little slower. All right. I got Orcs Multiplying again, and I have Pits of Mordor. So um, that's pretty good. And I can definitely buff up, you know, Dolgoldor, Moria, Mount Gundabad, and have some pretty powerful armies. Not a lot of elites, but a lot of units could be good. And um, that does make me feel tempted to go towards either potentially Rivendell or um, Lorien. Okay, they go ahead and move now, and I miss them. And I thought about, okay, maybe I can get some, you know, units onto them. Um, maybe I can fly a Nazgul onto them. But I didn't, I didn't have a lot of extra attacks. So I just didn't have extra movement on that. And I had three eyes. I was just hoping to hit them. Okay, I play Orcs Multiplying again. And um, and I'm happy to reinforce Mount Gundabad against, you know, I don't know that they're going for a military victory. It doesn't seem that likely. But um, Mount Gundabad is a common target. And with the North at war, I definitely think about that. So um, they move again here. And this time I hit them, which is, I think, fair. And they get revealed. It's actually two... Uh, to uh, Corruption, which is always nice to get that out of an eye outside of Mordor. And um, what are they going to do? I think they're going to take, yeah, so they lose Horn of Gondor and um, and they take one Corruption and now they're at four. So, okay, fair enough. Um, and yeah, okay. So what am I doing with this muster? Uh, I upgrade. I start to get Orthanc ready. Obviously, I would like to drop um, New Powers Rising, um, but either way, I sort of want to get ready. If they have a turn where they don't have an army muster, then I might be able to sneak into Helm's Deep or require them, make them use a um, character die to get these units from West of Net in. So, all right, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, okay, instead, I just, instead of upgrading um, the double upgrade, I just get a regular lead in. I'm not sure why. I guess I just wanted to have more units around. I don't think that really matters much. Okay. Um, what do you discard here? I think I would get rid of Lure of the Ring. Um, they are revealed right now, but I'm not... My strategy is not to corrupt the Fellowship. I think I just want to get my armies moving. So I'm guessing Lure of the Ring goes. We'll see. Yep, Lure of the Ring is what I discard. I allocate one eye... And roll no more, and three more Palantirs. So um, I'm happy to not be rolling I. Will those Palantirs be useful? I have Fighting Urukai, so maybe I can do that. Shadow is moving, could also be potentially useful, given that I want to sort of go after Gondor. Um, and they roll three movement. This is a perfectly nice, flexible roll. Out of curiosity, let's just look at statistics right here. Um, plus nine plus nine on Palantirs. I rolled 15 Palantirs so far this game. So um, I am minus three on eyes. I mean, I'm I'm just, I'm, I'm minus on uh, a bunch of my attacks. So, um, but I'm doing fine on musters. Uh, low on eyes, which is good. Ridiculously high on Palantirs. Also, look, I'm plus three on sixes. So I am hitting them um, in combat and hitting them on the hunt. Um, so... And they've had a pretty balanced roll. Okay. So uh, let's see what happens this round. What am I going to do? I I guess I, I don't know that I have enough to go after um, to go after Rohan yet. So I think I'm just going to try and clean up Gondor. Uh, I think I do have enough movement, given that I got the Shadows moving. I think I have enough movement to go after um, Dol Amroth. So we'll see what happens. They move to Fords of Aizen uh, right off the bat without passing. And they move to Dale, which is a little weird um, to me because I, I'm... Like, I have this big army in Dol Guldur, and that army in Old Forest Road was protecting the Woodland Realm. And now, when I only have one eye in the pool, well, how are you going to get this army from Dale to protect Woodland Realm? Yeah, so I... Yeah, I forgot about this. I think this is another another mistake, probably. Um, I just don't see why we needed to defend Dale. What we really need to do is defend Woodland Realm or just stay in Old Forest Road. And this also opens up Helm's Deep to a possible attack from Minas Tirith. I don't know that I want to go that route, but I do have Wormtongue in play. So if, if this army from Minas Tirith can go just fold Edoras Westumnet, like 
Rohan is not a war. Um, okay, so I go ahead and muster an elite in Dol Guldur because I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to go up and, you know, I got my path cleared. Um, and I do have Shadow is moving here. So I, ha I have more attacks than it seems like. Um, they hide using a character die, which is interesting. I'm... What else are you spending the Palantir on? I guess maybe on on help unlooked for? If this army comes up to Helm's Deep, then you could help unlooked for? But I might have been tempted to just... Um, first of all, I'd probably just pass more. Or maybe... Yeah, I don't know. I think if, the, if uh, Shadow had something nasty to play on the Fellowship, I probably would have already played it. So I think the risk of staying revealed is pretty low. Um, okay, I'm moving. I'm not sure why that die is there. but Okay, so I went ahead and moved, and now I'm sending my army up to Helm's Deep. So I did a move into Lasarnach. I moved into Druiden Forest. I moved... Uh, okay, interesting. I moved from near Harad to West Harondor, and I moved from Dol Golder to North Anduin Vale. Okay, so even after all that, I'm not going towards Woodland Realm. Interesting. Not sure why not. I guess I just figured they would move from Dale into Woodland Realm, and then I would have kind of a tough fight. But if I go after Lorien... Um, it's, it's just an easier battle. And maybe this army has enough to then continue toward Lorien. I'm not sure. What, what would you do with this turn? I'd love to hear your comments. What would you do? Turn five, have a lot, finally get plenty of army movement. Your armies are mustered. You can do things that you want to do. Um, is this the direction that you would go? I'm a little, I'm wondering what's happening here in Pilar Gear and Dol Amroth. Okay. I continue, they pass. I continue to move armies. Um, and I'm now outside of Lorien. Rohan advances towards war, but when I take Edoras, when I move into Edoras and Westmanet, they're not going to actually go towards war because they can't because they're still passive. So this is an example of Wormtongue actually doing something. Um, I draw a card here what a crazy draw so after uh, oh i see i wanted to why did i do that why did i should have drawn before moving that that would have been better um okay so that's what i did but now i top deck corsairs of umbar 10 percent chance top deck corsairs of umbar and now i'm like oh okay i guess i'll go attack Dol Amroth. Um, weird. All right, so now I move. I take Edoras with my fold army. And now I move from West Herondor into Umbar, which clearly telegraphs. I just drew Corsairs of Umbar. All right, are they going to... So they give me a ring. So they're giving me a ring now um, to muster into... Uh, Dol Amroth. And I think that's an example of maybe maybe you didn't need to maybe you could have passed more early on to see all this. Um, okay. So uh, I'm very happy to have a ring and I'm not worried about additional mustering in Dol Amroth at this point. So I go ahead and move to Westamnet and they move they have to retreat from Fords of Eisen into Helm's Deep. I might have left a single regular in Fords of Fords of Eisen. What are they doing? Uh, no. Okay. So maybe it would have made sense to leave a single regular in Fords of Eisen since you're, you you do not need more than five units in Helm's Deep. Um, I besieged Lorien and then they move. So they only moved once this round. They used one character die to hide, one character die to move, and one character die to move a unit from Fords of Eisen, from move the army from Fords of Eisen into Helm's Deep. But they could have 
potentially moved three times. Okay. Um, I hit them on the single, uh, on the single die. So, and they, no damage, but they get revealed. Um, obviously that's, that's bad luck for them. Um, reveal is not unreasonable if you're going to get hit, but still that was unlucky. Okay. Um, and then I play Corsairs and now they're under siege. So I am a little worried about this from a Gondor perspective because units in Pelargir, you could muster up in Pelargir and come retake Minas Tirith. Uh, it's a little scary. So sending this army to Westamnet while simultaneously doing Corsairs seems like probably not the right play. I feel like maybe this is an okay situation, but I probably messed something up. Um, if I can manage to get this under control, then I do have uh, Rohan for three, Gondor for five, and Lorien for two more. So it might be okay, but it's definitely worrisome. I have Flocks of Kribain. That has to be the thing that I discard. They drew Smeagol Helps Nice Master. Um, what are they going to get rid of? I mean, they could save Guards of the Citadel if they're going to go try and retake Minas Tirith, muster up a bunch in Pilar gear. What's their force pool in Gondor? Yeah, they only have one elite, so I guess it doesn't it doesn't help. I'd probably get rid of Guards. Um, maybe get rid of one Ent, but it does seem like Rohan's going to be in play, so it's Ents are very powerful combat cards. Axe and Bow could be a good thing to get rid of. Because they're doing, I mean, yeah, their corruption's at four, but they're still doing okay. All right, so they get rid of, oh, they, they also drew, um, they, they had one more card to draw, I see. Um, they got rid of Heroic Death. I guess it's not playable in um, Dol Amroth, but it is playable in Lorien and Helm's Deep. That tends to be, Heroic Death tends to be a pretty powerful combat card for free people and especially if you can manage to get a companion in i don't know that gandalf is coming into helm's deep but if you need to hold it um that's three hit points it could be worth it um and oh and this is another cool thing to notice um riders of theoden is the single card that lets you muster into helm's deep while it's besieged um because riders of theoden says um, recruit one Rohan unit, regular elite, and one leader, either in Edoras or in a Rohan region containing a companion. Um, and so if the companion is in siege in Helm's Deep, then um, you can muster there. And normally, like Guards of the Citadel lets you muster in Minas Tirith when it's under siege. Uh, there's a card for Dol Amroth, Immer Hill of Dol Amroth. There are cards for all the Elven strongholds. There's Dane Ironfoot's guard for Erebor. Um, but the only card that lets you do that for a Rohan region is Riders of Theoden if you have a companion there. So um, that's cool when you get to do it. I don't know that they'll get a companion in there in time, but um, I could be cool. Okay, so... Um, all right, I allocate one eye, and I don't roll any Palantirs this round. So weird. I continue to roll really well on musters, and I'm now getting a bunch of attacks. So, um, you know, I think I got somewhat lucky with my... I don't, I don't know how lucky I got with my card draws. It is. I mean, I drew a bunch of strategy cards. Uh, you know, I've drawn two-thirds of the strategy card deck. So you're going to get some playable cards if you draw two-thirds of the strategy card deck. Um I am definitely nervous about them rolling a bunch of musters right now. Um, and then we get one muster plus a Will of the West. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know. All right. They start by hiding the fellowship. Um, we're moving cards around, I guess. I muster um, units. What did I undo? Okay. I, f I, okay. I decided to give up on Rohan temporarily and go after um, Dol Amroth. Okay. I don't know exactly what I'm afraid of. Uh, seems like I just... It's always a little sad when you have the Witch King right in front of a stronghold that you're definitely planning on attacking. Um, but I guess I just wanted to take care of Dol Amroth as soon as I could. 
Um, and I guess I'm thinking, oh, if I can put a unit on the fellowship, um, then they are less likely to be able to make it to um, Mordor this round. Because if they get revealed, it might slow them down a bit. Okay, uh, I'm playing a strategy card and Desperate Battle against No Quarter. Um, I get three hits to their uh, three hits. Did I take the right number of hits? Yeah. And then I press the attack, redraw another Desperate Battle. Am I going to play Deadly Strife here? I think I'm just going to try and go for it. Um, Deadly Strife, they didn't play any card. Uh, I only get two hits, though. And they get th four hits against me. And then I have to stop. So this is worrisome, especially if they have um, Immerhill of Dol Amroth. Um, elves are not at war, so I'm not afraid of uh, Corsairs of Umbar. But but now, like, is this army going to be able to take out um, Dol Amroth? Probably, but even a little bit of mustering in Pelargir is not going to leave me a lot to be able to defend... Um, so I'm feeling I'm feeling nervous about this. I attack again. I, you know, I guess I play desperate battle just to make sure um, that I can try and take it out. And I don't manage to take it out. Um, I don't know why I rolled only three there. Uh, oh, right, because I only right. I see. So I rolled too many. I only had four units there. So that's why I I rolled too many on my combat roll, and that's why I rolled one fewer on my leadership reroll. All right, so I only got one hit. Um, they get they get one back against me, and um, and then I redraw Integrate Host, which is obviously very effective at killing off that one final unit in Dol Amroth, but I also feel like maybe this mustering in Umbar, Near Harad, Far Harad for Great Host could be very useful if I need to be prepared to defend and retake um, Minas Tirith because Pelargir could easily get out of control. Um, and just imagine Pelargir if it had two regulars in it uh, that had played scouts from Osgiliath into Pelargir. Um, I probably wouldn't have sent these armies north. A lot of things could have been different. Okay, they muster in Pelargir. Clearly the right choice. Um, I play many kings now because I want to try and get to Asgiliath as soon as possible before this army from Pelargir goes and causes a mess. Um, I don't recall... Uh, mustering in all three of these before. Usually um, you don't put all six units down there, but that's an efficient muster. Um, they play Axe and Bow here with their Palantir. Okay. Um, perfectly nice. I, you know, part of me is tempted. Like, could could I have just moved? Um, I, I mean, I like the, I like the mustering in Pilar gear. It, it's certainly going to cause me trouble. Um I might have moved first to see if I got revealed, and then I could have used Strider's ability to hide. So, all right, so I'm moving units, and now they attack into La Sarnach. And I knew that was a possibility with the Will of the West, um, so I made sure to save this army um, movement to be able to, assuming they defeat the unit in La Sarnach, I can at least fill up um, Minas Tirith with um, these units from Druidan Forest and Osgiliath. Um, the other thing is Rohan is not at war. It is tricky for Rohan to get to war given that Wormtongue is in play. Um, and so I'm not particularly scared of um, uh, Path of the Woeses. And I think that might have been, I might have included that in my calculations when... Um, seeing what was going on in Dol Amroth, trying to take it out fast, um, clean up Gondor fully, and then um, and then come back towards Rohan, not putting Rohan to war. So um, the other thing is, how happy am I that Strider is not in Rohan and I'm not worried about Dead Men of Dunharrow? Like this this could be this could be a real mess if if I was worried about Dead Men of Dunharrow also. Um, I wonder 
I really am curious to hear how people would have played this differently with Shadow because it feels certainly I've made some mistakes here. Okay, they attack into La Sarnach. They do get a hit, um, which was like about 50-50, and I don't get a hit. And now I'm like, oh, that was sad. Now, I will acknowledge that it looks like I don't have that much going against Minas Tirith um, to defend Minas Tirith, but this is not a giant army. Um, and I have not drawn either Ulog High or... Or um, half orcs and goblin men, which are my muster cards. So, um, and I only have six strategy cards left. So my chances of at some point drawing into those are pretty high, especially because if I keep fighting into Lamroth, I can cycle Pits of Mordor um, and that. So um, I go ahead and move. And I was thinking, do I need more than one unit in there in Minas Tirith? I felt like one was enough because why because i'm gonna draw into those mustering cards um i guess because i just i wanted to get this army going and i didn't want to waste too much time and if i left uh osgilius entirely open then they could move towards um mordor i don't know i think i just i think i was just risking it a little bit here because i needed i wanted to get these guys under control as soon as possible Maybe that was a mistake. Curious to know your thoughts on that move, too. All right. Um, they move the Fellowship here. And um, I miss, which is fair. And then I attack into Dol Amroth because I'm like, I got to take care of Dol Amroth. I play another strategy card because I want to make sure I cycle into Ulug Hai or Half Orcs and Goblin Men. Um, and I also want to make sure I kill that. So I play Pits of Mordor. It is a nice mustering card, but um, I play it because I just want to maximize my chances of killing that one unit i do kill it um they don't hit me back and now i have three units in dole amroth um and then i drew into okay so here i drew into half orcs and goblin men okay all right um they draw um power of tom bombadil and bilbo song fine um we reclaim dice Oh, and I managed to draw into Shadows Gather. That's obviously pleasant for me. And maybe I should have remembered that I had that, and so I didn't need to rush these units together. I don't know. Um, okay, they. I allocate one eye. I roll two more. Oh, good, my Palantirs are back. I uh, rolled three more Palantirs. And um, they got this beautiful, flexible roll. Um, gives them a lot of options. And... I don't know. Clearly, they can get into Mordor this round. Um, I have I've already played Day Without Dawn, so they have they're safe with those three wills of the West. Um, how quickly am I going to get to five victory points, and how much trouble can they stir up with these units in Lasarnach against Minas Tirith? Um, they start by mustering a regular in Pilar gear and a regular in Lasarnach, and then I. I'm not sure exactly where I'm attacking. I think I'm attacking Pelargir from West... Yeah, okay, Pelargir from West Herondor. Um, They play Daylight here, which is very surprising to me because, one, that's a really good reinforcement into Helm's Deep, and two, um, it only saves a third of a hit because I don't have any re-rolls here, and I'm only hitting on six, so... I would have been very inclined to just save that. Um, I miss. Um, they hit, so that's nice at least. And now they're in La Sarnach. I do press because I just don't want them mustering a bunch more. I did not get a bunch of attacks. Um, but I do have um, Shadows Gather that can help me. And I do have a ring that can help me. So um, they attack into Minas Tirith, and I play my half orcs and goblin men. So if I, you know, I guess that was a little risky. If I hadn't um, drawn into that, I could have had some problems. Um, though I did have, I had Shadows Gather also as an option that I could have drawn. So I could have gotten more units into Minas Tirith too. So um, now I think it's really hard for these uh, five hit points to defeat these three hit points. You don't have any leadership. Maybe you separate companions now. You could, if you separated, if you're really going serious about reclaiming Minas Tirith, you could separate 
a couple of captains, Boromir and um, Gimli, maybe, or Legolas, into Minas Tirith. That could be pretty cool. Could definitely cause some trouble there. Oh, you could also, you could separate Strider. And then if you manage to retake Minas Tirith, you could crown him this turn. That'd be pretty fun. Um, also, that is an argument for saving Axe and Bow. Um, if you, you know, who knows what the chances were of retaking this and if you're going to separate companions and all that. But Axe and Bow is just a very effective way of retaking strongholds or capturing strongholds for free people. Automatic hits are good. Um, okay, so they attack into Minas Tirith, no leadership, and um, they get one hit. Okay, not the best odds, but fine. And I get two hits back at them. So that's obviously very unlucky. Um, for them, you would not expect me to get two hits. And now I think that's really hard to take. I use a ring to, uh, move some armies around. What am I doing? Undoing, undoing, undoing. I actually instead, uh, what's going on? After all, what the heck am I doing? Sorry, not really sure what's going on. I'm trying to follow. Okay, so after all that, what I did was use my muster to power up or think. That's what I did. Sorry for all the undos. Okay. Um, then they draw a character card. Okay. Uh... You had Smeagol Helps Nice Master. Uh, that could have been an okay one to play. I'm not sure exactly what Free People's plan is here. Uh, Gondor is reasonably well contained by, by Shadow. Um, it's not completely contained. I might be... You have to move one more time to get... Is the Fellowship at one movement right now? I think maybe the fellowship should be at zero movement right now. That might have been throwing us off. Um, okay, anyway, I'm moving armies now. I used a ring to move armies. I leave myself with four hit points in Orthanc because now if they have two Ents, one Ent is impossible to take out Saruman. Two Ents has a chance to kill Saruman, but it's a little less than... 50-50. Um, I think it's like 40% chance. And um, I do want to preserve Saruman if I can because I've been holding Fighting Urkai since I think turn one. So um, that's my thinking there. And now they're playing Ents. Yeah. So there's the Ent. They got two hits. Obviously I'm quite nervous. And um, they play their second one and they get one hit. So that is... About what you'd expect, um, you get one and a half hits um, on three dice, about three hits on six dice. So that is fair. That is exactly why I left four. Um, but obviously, it would have been nice if they were able to kill um, Saruman. So both of my minions uh, had really close calls this game. Um, they um, And now they go ahead and play Smeagol Helps, Nice Master. So um, that's cool. And... Uh, I play Shadows Gather, right, and this is an effective way of bringing the Witch King to Lasarnach, and you can capture... Lamadon is currently not um, controlled by Shadow uh, because I played Corsairs of Umbar and never captured that, but now I'm going to move through it and capture it. So I capture Lamadon, um, I get in position to take out, um, take care of Minas Tirith, and um, yeah... So, and now we notice the, the error that the fellowship was, uh, the fellowship track was at one. I, I wonder if my opponent realized that. I think they did know that they had to move twice this round. Um, so I don't think that was a surprise, but maybe they had looked at that in the middle of the round and, and calculated differently. So that is a little bit of a bummer. We declared the fellowship, they declared the fellowship, but then we didn't re reset the fellowship track when that happened. So, um... It's both players' responsibility to be aware of game state, 
Um, I don't actually think it was a surprise because I, I remember saying, right, it's at one, it's at zero, right? And they were like, yeah. So I, I don't think I don't think it did end up surprising either of us. We just hadn't corrected the track. Okay, and they made choices, right? They made choices to um, play the Ents when they had the chance, which was a good gamble. Um, the strategy card draw to draw Gray Company, I don't know. I think that, I guess maybe that was a mistake. And maybe it was because of the Fellowship track, so who knows. Um, okay, so what's happening here? Uh, I don't really know. I don't know what that was. I, I, oh, right. They were attacking. They used that die to attack from Minas Tirith into, um, from outside of Minas Tirith into the Minas Tirith siege. And, um, yeah, that I think was not right because the chances of that succeeding are so low that there are just probably better things you can do with that will of the west i think um it feels like you could move the fellowship once um i don't know this this was really an unfortunate turn for for free people they made they tried to make an attack onto ministerith but it just wasn't enough they could have probably supported it with um characters and we talked about that after the game if some characters had come to Minas Tirith that could have easily made the difference um okay so I go ahead and um attack into Minas Tirith I'm not exactly sure why I think I just I, I don't know I wanted to take care of them uh I ended up getting a bunch of hits and they got only one so um Minas Tirith is now taken care of and I got to redraw a character card and that is that so that was obviously a very good round for me easily could have gone much worse for um for me and also free people didn't make it into mordor so i think if i'm looking at this turn and now free people are in mordor probably still okay for shadow like you can probably take out helms deep and lori in this turn but certainly not guaranteed um Given that the Fellowship is not even in Mordor yet, I'm certainly feeling good as Shadow here. Um, so I got Nazgul Strike, which could be useful. Maybe we'll slow them down. Um, they roll again before me. I don't know if we're going to undo this or not. I allocate zero eyes, roll one. Right, and then we did, we did undo it because I, I shouldn't know, especially because I was thinking about allocating zero eyes. Um, I shouldn't know what they rolled. So that was a situation where I declared zero eyes and then rolled, and then they re-rolled. And they still got plenty of movement, so that's fine. Um, I start by mustering in Orthanc. I don't know. Why am I doing that? I guess I just want to make sure I have enough to take out, um, to take out Helm's Deep. I form up my army in Fords of Eisen and I leave Orthanc open because the odds of them top decking an Ent card were pretty low. Um, and so now this is just a powerful army in Fords of Fords of Eisen. And they play Spirit of Mortar. Oh man, if they had had that one turn sooner, they could have taken out um, they could have taken out Minas Tirith potentially. With Spirit of Mordor, because I did have one one Isengard and one um, one uh, Orc uh, Mordor Orc in there. So okay, so they're playing this. Who are they playing this against? What's happening? Ah, okay, they played it against. Sorry, I didn't realize they were playing against Fours of Eyes, and I couldn't see that that had. I should have realized that had multiple um, units. So, okay. Um, yeah. What is What does that really get you? I would be... Huh. What else do you do with that? What do you do with this muster and the, and the army movement? You know, if you had these units in Dale in Old Forest Road still, and Dol Golder is open, you could move towards Dol Golder. And 
I don't have a ring. I've already played um, Orcs Multiplying again in Pits of Mordor. So that would be pretty fun for Dale to come take that. And I don't have a ring. So I don't know what it really gets you. But it might make Shadow nervous. Um, okay. Anyway. Uh, I attack into Helm's Deep. Uh, Rohan is now finally at war. And um, this is a pretty big army. Obviously, they, they're, you know, who knows what they have. But I'm very happy to get Helm's Deep under siege. No companions in there. I have um, I have Fighting Urk High available to me. So this is pretty good. They move and I hit them on a single eye. So I have been, I have been rolling well. Um, I, I've, yep. All right. They take one, uh, they get rid of, uh, ax and bow. And, um, what did I do with my Palantir? Oh, I guess I was noting that I was using my Palantir in some ways. Oh, right. In some ways I was hoping to not hit them or at least not reveal them because I had Nazgul strike. So I was going to use a Palantir to be able to relocate my Nazgul um, to Lorien and to Helm's Deep. But this way, by revealing them, I actually have to use my character uh, die to move my Nazgul around. So that's kind of funny. Um, I go ahead and put a unit on North Athelion on the Fellowship because... I figure I have time. I'm probably, I don't need to kill, I don't need to get Lorien this round. Um, might as well try and reveal them into Minas Tirith. I don't know. Maybe that's silly. Um, okay, whatever. They hide using Strider's ability, and then I play Fighting Urukai. Right. So, and that's yet another reason why it's nice to have a companion in um, Helm's Deep because uh, then you could play a combat card round one. All right, I'm very happy with my um, options here. I'm not <laughs> making the same mistake with Relentless Assault. Uh, I'm just going to play Devil Rear of Orthanc, and um, I don't need to worry about holding on to this army card because they've already played Power Too Great. So I'm, I'm, I'm here are my 10 victory points, exactly as I predicted a while back. And um, I get one hit only. They get three hits against me. Uh, there's an automatic press. I redraw. I Now I redraw New Powers Rising. A little late, but okay. And um, I get... I'm not playing a card here. I guess I'm just worried about Relentless Assault. I'm just going to wait and see how the combat goes. Maybe it'll be okay, but I'm just taking it easy. I... Maybe I could have played Foul Thing from the Deep. Um, but maybe I'll use it to stall the Fellowship. I, I don't know. Um, I got three hits on that one. So that was lucky for me. They do get four hits back. Um, and now in the final round, um, they still have four hit points remaining and I have six. So I'm just not playing cards. I'm like, I do not want to lose... The Witch King here, but I get three hits. So I definitely have been rolling quite hot on my sixes. They, they were dishing out a lot of damage too, but in general, if you have both players rolling a lot of hits in combat, it tends to favor uh, Shadow. So um, they only get one hit back. And then with that, I'm like, well, I guess I'll just lose a regular and press once. Um, so I press once and then... Um, I use Great Host. I almost never play New Powers Rising as the combat effect because it's such a powerful muster effect. But um, this is a perfect time for it. I'm not mustering more in Orthanc, so um, let's go ahead and take out uh, Rohan with it. And um, that's that. So I did get um, quite, a, quite a bit more lucky on that roll. And then they move the Fellowship and um, I miss them this time. And so I get to use Nazgul Strike after all to relocate the Fellowship. And um, I mean to relocate my Nazgul. 
So maybe it was a mistake to play the Nazgul there because who cares? Anyway, I roll for the hunt and hit them. It doesn't really matter. Boromir goes away. And now I'm going to try and take out um, take out Lorien because I can just win the game right here. So um, I play uh, Foul Thing from the Deep. That's fine. Um, and I get look at that a ridiculous number of hits i get four hits on that um so i'm definitely rolling really hot on combat they get one back um i press and um that's that so that was the game um let's look at the statistics in the end um i ended up plus 11 on palantirs i i don't recall a game where i've rolled this many palantirs but also i was plus two on fives and plus five on sixes so um i definitely had very hot combat rolls i had a whole nother round so even if those combats had gone worse um the fellowship is only now making it to mordor so i wasn't in a huge rush but um i think this was a just an interesting example of how even if you get a crazy number of Palantirs, if your combat is going pretty well and you're low on eyes, um, you're still able to be pretty effective. I I turned Palantirs, I used a lot of Palantirs for, um, you know, the, the army attacks with, uh, or just army movements. I had the shadow, um, the shadow is moving. I had Grand and fighting Urukai. Um, the Nazgul strike let me move my Nazgul around. So um, I had some good mustering cards that I ended up using with Palantirs. So um, there are good ways of making use of that. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, reminder once again that the World Tournament is starting up. So please sign up for that if you're interested. It's a great way to play some um, some really fun games and you know slightly more competitive games for of War of the Ring. And um, the format I think is pretty beginner friendly. You end up playing. Um, there's like a qualifying section which is called we're calling it Road to Rivendell, and um, you play two matches. And if you win either one of those matches, then you qualify for the single elimination section um that follows so um i'm hoping a lot of people enjoy it it's a new format we're trying this year but it's used in the um, world board game championship um that gets played in person so it is a tested format i think it'll be a lot of fun have a great rest of the day thanks so much